Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and uh, it's finally time to do some efficiency testing in the Bolt EV. So for this uh, first video I'm going to test at 56 miles per hour. It doesn't seem like a round number but it's actually 90 kilometers per hour and it seems to be uh, a baseline number that a lot of people want to test at and see. Now a couple of things because I noticed a lot of people trying to do efficiency testing and benchmarking and a lot of times there are conditions that aren't really conducive uh, to the testing winds uh, rain things of that nature that all have an effect on the efficiency numbers the purpose really and this is what we should define first the purpose in doing efficiency testing is to set a baseline so you might say oh well that's not real world or oh, that's not a realistic efficiency? Well, that's probably right. However, by setting a baseline, you can then give people a comparable number that they can then apply, oh, well, now instead of driving in a straight line, I'm gonna be driving a lot of curves. How is that going to affect my efficiency? Oh, well, instead of driving at temp temperate temperatures, I'm driving at hotter or colder temperatures. How is that going to affect my efficiency? Oh, I'm driving into a headwind or with a crosswind. How is that going to affect my efficiency? But you can't really test that until you've established what the baseline is. And I see a lot of people say, well, oh, if you just do A to B to A testing round trip, right, it will compensate for those other factors. But it does not. Driving into a headwind, for example, it has a significant impact on efficiency and you don't get it back with a tailwind. And in fact, wind of any kind, three quarters of the time, it's hurting you. So a front wind, a front quartering wind, crosswind, all negatively impact your efficiency. A rear quarter wind, it might help, but not really. So really the only helpful one is a tailwind. But because the energy to overcome aerodynamic drag increases at the cube of the speed that you're traveling, a 10 mile an hour headwind, even if you get it back as a 10 mile an hour tailwind, will take away more energy. So you're looking at as much as a 5% or more impact on your fuel efficiency by driving into a, a, a 10 mile an hour headwind, even if you turn it into a round trip and have a 10 mile an hour tailwind. And the same with elevation. Even if you have a net zero elevation change, if you're traveling up and over hills, even with a regenerative braking system that's 70 to 80% efficient, you're going to end up with as much as a 20% difference in the fuel economy than if you had no elevation changes over the course of that trip at all. These are all factors you want to take into consideration. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what's called the I-5 business loop, but it's really Highway 99. It's a highway, no stops, some curves, really little elevation change. If memory serves, it's going to be about 20 to 25 miles each direction, but we will do an A to B to A to trip. And then we're going to do one at 75 miles an hour with a parallel route on actual Interstate 5. So the conditions look fairly ideal for this. Uh, it's a little over 80 degrees outside. I am going to run the air conditioner, uh, climate control cabin set at about 70 to 73 degrees probably, uh, just enough to keep it cool in here. And uh, we'll check the efficiencies. And I'm going to track as we do the trip. I'll speed up the video, but those of you who want as much data as you can get, I'll give it to you. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll see after the first leg and then after round trip exactly uh, what the efficiency of the Bolt EV is doing 90 kilometers an hour or 56 miles an hour in baseline testing conditions. Cold roll. Well, you can see it took me a little mile us to get here, but uh, we're at 82 degrees, which isn't so bad. Uh, the temperatures look fairly calm, and uh, I'll try to clean off the windscreen. And I'll go ahead and uh, reset this. And I'm not going to go over to metric. I'm not. I can. I can uh, calculate it back the other direction. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Uh, already using six percent battery for air conditioning, but or whatever. Uh, and so we've already used 
4.8 kilowatt hours. So that's also a baseline. And I'll bring up the battery percentage uh, through Torque Pro. And I, uh, you know, got the windshield cleaned and we got the tire pressure uh, down to approximately 39. Uh, I'm not going to get it closer than that on the other two, but, uh, you know, this should also give a pretty good approximation for what the stock recommended tire pressure is. Let's get going. All right, let's go. I'm also going to be basing my speed on Torque Pro because it's more accurate to half a mile an hour. So we'll see. Yep, it's saying 55.9 miles per hour and like I said, it, I've noticed it to be very, very accurate. So we're counting on cruise control to maintain our speed, but um, it'll be better than any sort of pedal modulation. And of course, early on here, uh, we're all leveled out. Actually, we're all closer to 38 PSI on the tire pressure, so that's good. But it will increase as we drive. I actually didn't think this was going to be possible, but we might end up overtaking someone while doing 56 miles per hour. Mind you, this is a 55 mile per hour road and people are not usually shy about driving the posted speed limit. So let's step up our speed a little bit. Now that wasn't fast enough to, you know, really affect the numbers too much, but it was unforeseen. If anything, I was expecting to be overtaken on numerous occasions. Okay, so that was interesting. It was a bit shorter uh, than I remember. I don't want to drive into town, and maybe that's what I'm thinking about is uh, by the time you actually get into town, it's about 20 miles. But um, So we, we've done 14.6 miles. If you count the regeneration from slowing down to a stop again, which is technically fair because that is energy that you get back, we're at 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour uh, air conditioner taking about five to six percent of that so really uh, without the air conditioner it'd probably be a solid 4.5 miles per hour but let's just chalk this up to 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour what's displayed on the screen um, and uh, 
there's a little bit of a breeze, but that shouldn't have any anything much of effect. I think the bigger effect is actually lowering the tire pressure at these speeds. It will have a bigger impact on your overall efficiency. I'd probably see a tick up from there just because I normally run at 42, but this is for the sake of benchmarking. So 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour for the A to B run, and we're about to start back on our B to A returning to the original location and uh, checking what our efficiency is. Let's go. Normally you slow down to let people pass, but this is for science. So it looks like we have about a mile to go. Uh, we're just about closing up the B to A trip. The efficiency is slightly lower, which, um, you know, is probably there is an elevation difference, maybe 50 to 100 feet. Uh, one of the things you'll note is your efficiency drops really low right as you start, uh, and then it picks up again afterward. Well, the reason for that is uh, acceleration takes a lot of power and you don't really go very far with it. So it's something you have to pay up front. But that's why you'll notice as we end, our efficiency spikes back up again because what you're doing is you're actually getting that energy you expended back. So here we are, we're approaching the 35 mile an hour sign, which is where we ended. So about 14.6 miles, which is where it should be. Uh, I'll just pull over here, but we're up to 4.2, which is about 0.2 miles per kilowatt hour lower. So, so there you have it. It was 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour on the B 
to a trip. So if you average just the basic math out, that's 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour at a sustained uh, 56 miles per hour, 90 uh, kilometers per hour. And now on top of it, we were using about 5% of our battery for air conditioning. So you can factor that in if you want to, or if you don't, that's up to you. Uh, but that does represent about a 0.2 mile per kilowatt hour increase in efficiency. Uh, but again, like I said, that, that can go either way. It was 85 degrees. So that would bump up your efficiency over say like 70 degrees a little bit too. Uh, doesn't quite offset it, but it's similar. So um, this is pretty much in line with what I would expect, uh, you know, about a something over a four um, mile per kilowatt hour average, somewhere between four and uh, 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour at 56 miles per hour. Uh, even 60 miles an hour, you're still going to be over uh, four miles per kilowatt hour. And this has been my experience so far is that the Bolt EV will match pretty much its EPA uh, mileage, uh, doing about 65 miles per hour, even if you're using climate control and air conditioning. And again, I have my tire pressure lowered to 39 PSI, uh, which will have a slightly higher rolling resistance than say if you were running at say 42 uh, PSI, which is what I typically do. But again, we're just setting baselines here uh, and you can extrapolate from here what you want. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out. And uh, look forward to more of my efficiency testing. Thank you for watching.